Hey, hey, what's up? It's your boy Burf, and I'm back, baby, with another epic vintage toy hunting adventure. And man, do I have a scary story for you guys. This is probably the scariest Facebook marketplace story I've heard to date, and it happened to my friend Teresa. It involves meth heads and pit bulls. My name is Burf, and this is my turf. I'm straight out of the thrift store. First of all, I gotta tell you, the haul that she ended up with after she got out of here alive was pretty epic. And I'm gonna show you everything. I'm actually gonna go over to her house and you're gonna get to see all the amazing vintage toys that she picked up for like $200. Like, it's pretty freaking epic, guys. But what it took to get these toys, I don't know, like, I don't... Teresa, Teresa, if you're watching, and I know you probably are, girl, you need to be careful. You need to like, you know, use a little more street smarts like in the future. And I know you know that we've talked about that already, but man, guys, like this was a pretty scary situation for Teresa. So I'm going to try and relay this story to you as best as I can from what I, she, I mean, she told me the story once, so hopefully I don't get any of the details all screwed up or anything, but basically she saw this listing on Facebook marketplace and it was like a ton of vintage toys. I'm talking transformers, mask, masters of the universe, GI Joe, like stuff complete in box, like some really epic stuff. And the guy just had on the listing, make me an offer. So Teresa messaged him and said, would you take $100? And he said, well, I just had somebody offer me 150. And at first she was like, oh, you know, I don't know if I wanna pay 150, more than 150 for that. But then she said, as I was kind of like looking at the photos and stuff, I was like, oh, that's a pretty good deal. So like, I'm gonna see if I'll take, you know, 200. So she messages them back, says, will you take 200? He says, yeah, sure. So he asks, or she says, okay, great. Where can I meet you? Can I get an address? He says, well, I'm kind of off the beaten path a little bit red flag so it'd probably be best if we meet up first and then you can follow me back to my place so she says okay now my first thought is like why are you know i'd be asking like why is he not bringing the toys with him if we're gonna meet up if we're gonna go all you know maybe i don't know maybe because there were so many of them she was thinking like you know he probably doesn't want to pack them up so i'll just follow him back to his place so anyway long story short she uh I shouldn't say that because it's kind of a long story. <laughs> but anyway, uh, she goes and she meets up with this guy. And she says he gets out of the car. And the first thing she notices, like, this guy is like a twig. He's like skinny as a rail and has like two teeth in his mouth. And she's like, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking like, man, this guy looks like a total meth head. So he says, hey, you know, hey, you can follow me, you know. So she's like, okay. So she ends up like they pull out of the parking lot, they drive for a little ways. And then she goes, we turn on to, she goes, Chris, it wasn't even a road. It wasn't even a road. It was like a, like a dirt lane or something. She goes, and we're driving back. We're kind of driving back through this wooded area. She goes, and I'm, you know, a little uneasy because we're off the beaten path. And she says, we end up coming to a bridge. Now, I'm going to show you a picture of this bridge in a second, guys. This bridge was pretty sketchy, but she uh, rolls up to this bridge and he drives his car over it. Now, it's like this old wooden rickety bridge that looks like it's about to fall apart at any moment, she says. And she said it's about a 15, there's like a ravine that it's going over and it's like a 15 foot drop to the bottom. So, you know, she drives her car over this thing and this thing gives out she's shit out of luck, you know what I mean? And hopefully she would survive the fall, but like, who knows, right? But it's like a 15 foot drop. But she decides, I'm not driving my car over that. So she said, I get out of the car and he stops on the other side and she goes, hey, she's like, I'm not driving my car over this bridge. I feel real uneasy about it. And he says, okay, well then you can just park your car there and get out and we can walk back the rest of the way. So she says, okay. So she parks her car and I'm like, Teresa, no, Teresa, no. He's like luring you back to like this. He's going to kidnap you or something and hold you ransom. Like, I'm like, anyway, so she crosses over the bridge and she goes, and we start walking and we're like, we're walking for a while. 
And I said to her, I said, well, how far do you think you walk? Do you think you walk like a quarter mile or something? She's like, yeah, probably about a quarter mile. She said that she has this app called, I think it's called the Lifeline app. And she told her husband, you know, she was going to do this pickup. So he, he notices on the app that she's gotten out of the vehicle and she's now walking. So he gets concerned because she's walking for a while. And he calls her and he says, hey, are you okay? She goes, yeah, I think I'm okay. You know, like it's kind of sketchy, but I think I'm all right. So she's like, I hang up with him and I'm walking. And then all of a sudden, like as I'm walking, she goes, there's like old junky cars like everywhere with brush growing over them. She goes, there's like tents set up around the perimeter and stuff like that. And she goes, and there are pit bulls, pit bulls tied to trees back there. And I guess like, you know, maybe they're barking at her or something like that. But she's like, my heart starts racing. She goes, we get up to like this tent area and all of a sudden this lady appears, this woman comes out and she looks just like him. And she goes, and I notice that now at this point, they both have like track marks, like all over their arms and stuff where they're like shooting up. So he says, oh my, all the stuff's around back. So she's like, so I started making my way around back and I'm like, no, Teresa, no, no. Teresa, what are you doing? What are you doing? They're gonna murder you. You know, so she's telling me this story. I'm like thinking, woman, what are you doing? So she's like, I get back here and they have all these toys laid out all on a table. And she goes, it's like a lot of stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I really, you know, I didn't bring a bag to like pack it all up, which she probably said she should have. And she goes, and, uh, I asked them if they had any bags and they didn't have any bags, but she's like, so I already, she goes, I had cash apped this guy $200 already. So then he says to me, says to her, where's the other 50 bucks? She goes, what 50 bucks? And she, he goes, you said that when you got here, you'd give me another 50. And she goes, no, I didn't say that. And he goes, yes, you did. And she's like, no, I didn't. And then she said, I pulled up our conversation and she goes, and he's kind of, you know, I'm showing him like what we had agreed upon, the $200 and I already paid him. She goes, and then he like starts going off, you know, and it's like, I should have looked this stuff up on eBay. I'm sure it's worth a lot more money than what you're paying for it and blah, blah, blah. And he starts like getting kind of like angry and stuff like that. And I'm thinking at this point, like I even was telling my wife about it, Nicole, and Nicole was like, I would have just given him the $50 at that point and got the hell out of there, you know? But no, Teresa was standing her ground. This was money, you know, money was on the line. So she's like, that's not, I didn't agree to another 50. So anyway, she said after he kind of like huffed and puffed for a while and kind of threw a little fit, he finally took a deep breath and was like, fine. You know, so she ended up, she had like, a box, I guess she had picked up nearby. And she said that he gave her a duffel bag that was filled with about an inch full of dirt in the bottom of it to like carry the toys back to the car. And she's like, oh no, I'm gonna have to make like two trips, you know? So she's like, and then like I had bought these Legos off of him as well. And she goes, when I got the Lego box, it had like a white powdery substance all over it. So she was like, I ended up just like throwing all of those away. And I'm like thinking to myself, eh, you know, it could have been like fentanyl or something like that. You know, you touch it and you're dead, you know, so smart move on her for that, you know. But anyway, she ends up uh, finally getting all this stuff together and getting the hell out of Dodge, you know, and she heads back. Then she messages me on the way and she goes, I guess after she got home, she's like, you know, I've got a story for you. And uh, I was like, first of all, she's like, I need your help. And then... She was like, cause you needed help, I guess, maybe kind of identifying some different things. Cause there was a box that had a bunch of weapons and stuff like that in it. And then she goes, plus I've got a story for you. And that's when I called her and she told me the story. So like, how crazy is that? With honest, honest question guys in the comments below, would you have stopped at the bridge and turned around? Or would you have kept going for the toys? Like Teresa, I want to know in the comments. Like, I don't know. At that point, like, I might have, like, I might have turned, turned my car around. <laughs> I don't know if it would have been worth it. But after seeing all these toys, I don't know. You know, like, if I guess maybe if I'd seen what she'd seen, I might have gone through with it. 
as well. So, but anyway, uh, we're gonna head over to Teresa's and we're gonna take a look at this haul. And I actually picked a few things up from her. She's gonna have a lot of this stuff for sale in her eBay store, which I will link below in the comments. I'll also put it in, this, in the description so you can go over to her store and if you see anything you like from this haul, uh, she might have it available for you. So I know she was gonna be listing the stuff today, she said. So you can click that link and head on over there. In the meantime, let me show you what she picked up. All right, gang, I'm at Teresa's house right now and um, you just heard the story. You just heard the story of how she ended up with all this stuff. So there were a few things that she had sent some pictures over that I was like, I want that, I need that in my collection. So I'm here right now kind of rummaging, rummaging through some things and picking out uh, what I'm gonna get. But I wanted to take this opportunity to show you guys like in person everything that she found. That's this is like the craziest story ever. Like how scary, you know what I mean? So anyway, uh, let me show you what she got. Okay, so first up, we've got this bin of Motu. So this is a King Hiss, which uh, I think we've got him complete, which is super cool. So I have one of him. Initially, when I got mine, um, I didn't have the arms for mine, so I had to buy those on eBay. So this is probably maybe like a $40, $50 figure in its complete status. Here's a Grizzlore. We've got uh, Clawful over here, Merman, my favorite, one of my absolute favorites, Trap Jaw. And then we've got Ram Man and Orko and Moss Man, like you can see all kinds of goodies in here, you know? So we got a bunch of parts as well. So we've got these uh, Castle Grayskull parts. I was looking for the pistol, but uh, could not find it, you know, that's, uh, a rather expensive piece and one that is always missing. And I, I looked through this whole box and I did not see it anywhere. I think we do have some She-Ra Princess of Power stuff here as well. So I got this and then this thing and then we found this thing in here. So there's probably some more She-Ra stuff in here as well. Some Motu vehicles. So lots of cool stuff there. Then over here, we got some Transformers. So we have a Starscream, and uh, he's in really good condition. He doesn't even have his decals on. I think his decals are around here somewhere. But uh, how freaking cool is that? And then look at this over here. We've got, oh yeah, is this... Uh, uh, no, that is not Starscream. Um, this is for Rodimus, Rodimus Prime. So it goes to this box over here. Yeah, so check this out. We got a Rodimus Prime with the box and the stickers, like still a, totally intact, not even put on like this stuff. I don't even think this stuff was ever played with. Check this out over here. We've got, this is really cool. Always need to see these advertising inserts inside got a bunch of the uh, smaller Transformers here. Uh, we've got the Aerial Bots, Autobot Cars, and oh my gosh. Just look at that. Insecticons. Predacons. So these are all the ones that you can, you know, combine together to make one big one so we've got that but um we've got an aerial bot here uh this is silver bolt so he is like let's see if we can pull him out of this box again we've got the instructions here on how to transform him here are the other parts that uh, make up superion and we'll pull him out Again, like, look at this. Like, the stickers aren't even on him because the stickers are all right here. <laughs> Amazing. And then we've got this He Man comic book, Eye of the Storm. So we got that. And then I'm actually purchasing this off of Teresa. 
I'm gonna get the iguana in box. How cool is that thing? So we'll do a little show and tell back at the bunker with this once I get it back there. And then some of the other stuff I'm gonna pick up is my Castle Grayskull doesn't have these cardboard inserts. So I do have the big robot and I do have the computer, but my computer's in pretty rough shape. This is a really nice one. So I figured I'd pick it up. And then we've got the, uh, you know, the weapons here. So we got that. And then also my gray skull does not have its instructions. So I'm going to buy that off of her as well. This is a weapon that goes to Modulock. I've got a Modulock, but I don't have his weapon. And then here's the dragonfly. And uh, Wild Bill is in here somewhere. I saw, oh, here he is. He's all in pieces. <laughs> so he needs a new O-ring. So we got that. And then check this out. Initially, I was going to maybe try and buy this from Teresa, but I didn't realize that it actually came with the box as well. The box is kind of in rough shape, but she can get so much more money out of it just by having this box. So I told her, I was like, you know, I was going to buy it from her like in its loose condition, which it's in really great condition. But with that box, I just, it's just something I can't do at this moment. So, but it does have both figures that come with it. How freaking awesome is that, man? That volcano is just so badass. And then what's back here? Uh, some sort of piece to it. So we've got the volcano. And then we've got this box of like, you know, matchbox. Oh, there's a Duke's car in there. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Let's see if I can open this baggie up. I got to get that bad boy out and take a little closer look at it. Oh, there's some red lines in here too. Oh, wow. And is that like, is that Cooter's truck? <laughs> I don't know. Let's get this, let's get the general out here. Oh, wow. Now I've got this already, but that is so awesome to see. I do love me some Duke boys. Oh, there's two of them in here. Do you know you got two of them in here, Teresa? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow, that is awesome. And then she did say that there are some red lines, I think, mixed in here as well. So we got all of these. And then, check this out. So she's got the box for the Cobra Mamba and the Mamba itself. It's got its two blades, which a lot of times these blades are broken. So that's cool to see those intact. And then we've got some more G.I. Joe vehicles over here. This is the, uh, these are the, the missiles for the Mamba. I'm not sure if all of them are there or not. I think it might be missing a few pieces possibly. But just absolutely amazing. So all this stuff is going to be up for sale in her eBay store, guys. I'm going to put a link in the comments below. So uh, you can click that link and then uh, go over there and get you some. <laughs> so, oh yeah, here's another. Uh, let me show this one to you as well. I forgot about this. So this is Onslaught. So she also has an Onslaught in the box as well here. But yeah, click that link. And then, uh, like I said, these will all be up for sale. I don't know. Some of them may be buy now. Some of them may be on an auction. Either way, you know, I'm sure you'll get a good deal. Teresa always has good prices. In the meantime, I'm going to get my haul. We're going to head back to the bunker and we're going to do a little show and tell. All right, gang, here we are back at the bunker. And like I said... It's time for a little show and tell. So this is the stuff I picked up from Teresa. So I ended up getting this King Hiss shield. So my King Hiss had his staff, but didn't have the shield. So I believe this is going to complete him once I find him. I don't know where I put him. I think he's in a box somewhere because on my He-Man shelf over here, uh, my He-Man display, I didn't have enough room to put King Hiss, so I think I ended up packing him away. So I'm gonna have to get him out. I also picked up Modulox gun, so I did not have that. So when I saw that, I was like, I gotta have that. 
So I was able to uh, provide him a weapon now, which is super cool. Uh, as a little freebie, Teresa gave me this Kenner pamphlet that came with the mask vehicle. So I will open this up and we'll take a look at it here in just a moment. But I thought that was super cool. Another thing that she gifted me was this V4 Grunt. So I've got him, he's got his helmet and his backpack. He's just missing his weapons. So uh, I think I might have those. I've got a lot of Joe weapons, so I should be able to maybe at least uh, get him partially complete. I don't know if he came with one or two guns initially, but we'll figure it out. And then over here, uh, this is my buzz off, but I did not have the hat. I did not have the little helmet thing that buzz off came with. So I did have his weapon, but didn't have his helmet. So now I've got a complete buzz off. So thank you, Teresa, for that. And then last, but certainly not least, I picked up the iguana. How freaking awesome is this thing? It's gonna look so good with the rest of my mask collection. Now I did, uh, these stickers were peeling off pretty bad. Pretty, pretty bad. Let's see if I can fold this back up. I'll show you the front of it here. Um, that was like both sides were folded up and it was like ready to come off at any moment. So I just took a little Elmer's glue and uh, glued them all back together. Well, actually I didn't use Elmer's glue. I used this glue right here, this liquid adhesive. So it was a little tricky. I actually, when I put it on, I had to like hold the stickers down with my hands, uh, with my fingers for quite a while, probably like a good like 15 minutes before it would even get to a point where they would start to stick. Cause I tried lifting my fingers up off of it, you know, to keep it, you know, so I didn't, I wasn't pressing down on it the whole time and I would lift my fingers up and the sticker would just fold right back up. So I had to keep it down there for quite a while in order to like, you know, get it to finally lay down and stick. So, but I am super, super pleased with this. And the fact that it comes with the box is even better. I mean, check that out. So I only have um, two mask vehicles in my collection that have a box now, and that is the Iguana and the Piranha. So I think this is freaking awesome. So that's gonna look great on display. Let's take a look at this pamphlet. Oh my God, like look how amazing that is. It's like brand spanking new. It's like, it's never even like, you know, normally like when these things, when you've open them and close them multiple times, you know, you kind of get those, those uh, white lines on it that are creased and like where it's ready to, at some point it'll they'll actually like fall apart and this barely has them. So I just think this is an absolute beautiful piece. In fact, I might, I might maybe get it uh, framed. I'm not a hundred percent yet because wait until you see the backside because that'll be the only downside. If I get it, if I get it framed, you're only going to see one side of it. But if I don't get it framed, then you don't see any of it because it's in a box. <laughs> you know what I mean? But check this out. Mask Boulder Hill playset. Uh, we got the the Venom Adventure Packs. And then over here, we've got the Slingshot. We've got Firefly. We've got the Raven. The Volcano. We saw that at Teresa's. How cool is that thing? Oh my God, I would love to have that. That thing is just so legit. And then over here, we've got T-Bob. And then we've got the Hurricane, which is another favorite by a lot of mask collectors. And then over here, we've got the Firecracker and we've got the Stinger. We've got the Vampire. We've got Outlaw. And let's see, what else do we got? We've got the Rhino. We've got the Thunderhawk. I called that the Thunderclap in a previous video, if you remember. So we've got the Thunderhawk. We've got the Switchblade over here. We've got the Gator and the Jackhammer. And then we've got Condor, which was my very first mask figure ever. I had Brad Turner with the Condor. So this thing is just like I said, it's like in great condition, absolutely beautiful. But check this out. Check the other side. How cool is the artwork on 
this side. I might actually, I don't know, maybe I should get this side. If I get it framed, maybe I should have this side exposed. I mean, I just, the artwork on it, it's just unbelievable. Oh my God. And there's like some games that you can play like uh, crossword puzzles. There's a maze over here. And then it's to say here, how many smaller words can you find in the big word? To find at least eight switchblades. So you gotta try to find at least eight words in switchblade. So you got switch and blade, there's two right there. So anyway, this thing is awesome. So thank you, Teresa, for gifting this to me. This really made my day. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot as well. I also picked up the cardboard cutout pieces for Castle Grayskull. So I ended up picking up the uh, the weapons rack uh, from Teresa and I got the computer. This robot I already had, I actually had purchased a Castle Grayskull off of Teresa uh, a couple of summers ago, I think now. And uh, there were some cardboard pieces that came with it. You can see this one has quite a few creases in it. So this one is pretty beat, but I do have that. But these ones here are in pretty immaculate condition. I mean, cause if you look at the back of that cardboard and then look at the back of this cardboard, you can see the difference, right? Like all the creases in that one. And this one's like almost perfect. So same with this piece here. So I did end up picking these up because my Castle Gray Skull did not have all of these pieces and at some point maybe I'll upgrade this one here but I thought these were pretty cool too. Well like I said quite possibly the scariest marketplace pickup story I've ever heard. If you have a scarier story than that or you have a scary story of your own uh, involving a Facebook marketplace pickup or a Craigslist pickup let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Also, remember all this stuff is for sale. There's a link to Teresa's eBay store in the comments below. There's also one in the description. So if you're interested in any of the items that you saw, I'm sure you'll be able to get a good deal. Just tell her Burf sent you. But uh, anyway, uh, go check out her store. And if you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you, do me a favor, smash that like button. And if you wanna watch more videos just like this, then check out this next video.